Hi, this is Arielle Hyatt with Sound Advice. A few weeks ago, I had Derek Sivers of CD Baby come in, and we had a long-spirited conversation about CD Baby, how it started, and he gave a lot of amazing, wonderful tips for musicians. And this is the first episode of, of that series. It's called The Backstory, and in it, Derek talks about how he founded CD Baby. If you've ever wondered about that, stay right here and check it out. Welcome, Derek. Thanks. <laughs> so I wanted to have you here on my premiere episode of Sound Device because you and I have spent the last nine years talking about marketing and PR and many other things. And um, I really trust your insights. And I think musicians really need to hear what you have to say. So I want to dive right in. I want to start out and get the backstory of CD Baby because I know a lot of people don't know it. And um, since we go in five-minute chunks around here, I think a five-minute history of CD Baby would be wonderful for people to hear. Sure thing. Um, the deal is that I've been a musician my whole life. Uh, I've been a full-time musician since I quit my last job in 1992. So I was making a living uh, playing on people's records and producing people's records. And then when I put out my own album in like 1997, I did pretty well. I sold about 1,500 copies at live shows. And so I kind of felt like I was doing pretty good. So I called up uh, all the big online record stores at the time, which were like CD Now and some of the big ones. It's before Amazon sold CDs. So I called up all the big online stores and I said, hey, I've got this record. I've sold 1,500 copies on my own. Uh, would you guys like to sell it? And they all said, well, sure. Who's your distributor? And I said, well, I don't have a distributor. I don't need a distributor. They said, well, yeah, you do. They said, our, our stores are really just a front end to the major label distributors. So you have to go get yourself a major label or a large indie record deal and get yourself a distribution deal, and then you'll appear in our stores. And I said, well, wait a second. What if I just hung up the phone and called you back and said I'm a distributor? They said, look, kid, it doesn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> and I said, well, can't I just send you a box of CDs and you sell them and pay me? How hard could it be? They said, no, it just doesn't work that way. Sorry. I went, well, hell, I'll do it myself. How hard could it be? So, you know, this is back in 1997, so I didn't know anything about computers, and I went down to this bookstore, and I got a book on, like, CGI bin uh, computer programming. So I, like, went and did some computer scripts, like, okay, shopping cart, and I made a little shopping cart, and then I said, okay, I need to get, I need to accept credit cards, and uh, that was harder than I thought. It was, like, $1,000 in setup fees, and they actually send an inspector out to your location. They make you open a new bank account. It's like... Oh my God! I just want to sell my CD. So I went. Wait. So this was years before PayPal yeah. or any type yeah. of no online. PayPal. There's no PayPal. There was no Amazon. There was like all these tools we have today. Like ten years ago, they didn't exist. Right. And uh, so I was really just like out there on my own, and I didn't. I mean, I really went looking to see if there was any single business anywhere on earth that would sell my CD, and there were none. Nothing zip. And so I had to make this in order to sell my CD. So the the funny thing is that when I was done. Some of my friends, like other musicians in New York, went, dude, could you sell my CD? <laughs> and I went, yeah, okay, sure. So it was actually my band's website. It, my band was called Hit Me. So it was like, Hit Me. It's like, click here to buy my CD. Then it was like, for some of my friends. Then it was like three of my friends on the bottom of my webpage. And then it was like friends told friends. And then it was like eight of my friends on my website. And then I started getting calls from total strangers just like, hey, uh, my friend Dave said you could sell my CD. And I went, yeah, okay, sure, all right, I'll hook you up. And so I was doing all this as a favor. So the favor just kind of kept on going, and then uh, I had to start charging 35 bucks eventually uh, because it was like I was taking up all my time all day long doing these favors for strangers now. <laughs> so um, so I charged 35 bucks, but and, you know the important thing is that it was never meant to be a business, mm. and I really think that that set the tone for the company, that the whole thing at its core is just a service to help musicians do what they need doing. Right. And it was just set up to help musicians by a musician who was just, you know, a guy out there helping himself. And, uh, yeah, I think that really kind of set the tone for the company. So the cool thing is it's like 10 years later, and now we're the largest seller of independent music on the web or whatever, and uh, I think there's 200,000 musicians using CD Baby now. We've done like over 50 million in sales. But at its core, it's actually the exact same thing it was 10 years ago, which is just this little thing I set up to help musicians, and it's pretty much the same. Wow. So how did it all take off? I mean, obviously, one turned to two, turned to eight, turned to 10. But how did you get to 1,000? I didn't. I mean, I mean that, that's the real <laughs> answer. It's like, I seriously, um, 
I, I just, I really only helped out those first few friends and then those people told other people. So I think there's kind of a lesson in there for musicians that there's some things that you find yourself doing as a musician that you just feel you're beating your head against the wall and it's just not working and nobody wants it and everybody shoots you down. And you know, this is the exact opposite advice you're used to getting. Well actually, okay, you know, there's conflicting advice. One bit of advice could tell you, hey, you know man, persistence is what pays off. And you'll read in interviews with legends, I remember like Tom Petty uh, in a Rolling Stone interview, they said, hey, there were lots of bands in Florida like about your time, why did you get more famous? And he said, all the other ones just quit, and we were the only ones left. So it's like persistence pays off, you just keep doing it. But then other times, you see people that are just like, it's just not working, people, you know, it's like that old thing, you're like, look, they're just not into you, you know? <laughs> 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 they don't like your music. And it's like, you know, in a way, maybe you should try something new. Like if you're doing this garage band, maybe you should like, try something brand new and do some kind of crazy electronic record or just wear purple suits or something. Like just try something different instead of doing the same thing without changing it. Um, so, but then sometimes things just click. So I kind of feel like CD Baby's like one of those hit songs, like I'm a one hit wonder or something. You know, it's like, not like somebody who wrote a hit song is necessarily a better songwriter. It's just for whatever reason, people wanted to hear, you know, who let the dogs out. <laughs> At that moment. At that moment, yeah. Okay, so CD Baby at its core is, Derek always says, a CD store. But it's really a lot more than that because you did begin to build new services um, after after the original idea. Yeah. So what else do you offer musicians? Well, and I kind of changed my answer. I think when I started it, I said it was just a CD store because you got to remember the environment. We were in the middle of the dot-com boom, and everybody was starting these companies. They couldn't even tell you what they did. It was like, we enable end-tier distribution of stickiness for uh, sharing and, and client relations. Like, well, what do you do? Well, we are a portal that enables, you know, it's like, so what do you do? And they couldn't tell you. So my kind of rebellious nature during all that dot-com haze just said, we're a record store. Mm. And people would say, so do you enable end-tier? No, 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 we're a record store. Right. they say, so you distribute digitally? No, we're a record store. And they go, oh, I get it. So that was kind of, it was the right answer for the time. But when I look back in hindsight, it's not like my, my love of my life was putting plastic discs into envelopes. It's my love of my life was finding things to help musicians that other people weren't helping them with. And at the time, 10 years ago, that was distribution. You know, it's like there was nobody doing distribution 10 years ago, and so I had to help out my friends by doing distribution. But now it's like 10 years have passed, and distribution is so plentiful that you can uh, you can walk out onto a street in New York City and go, hey, I've got a record, who wants to sell it? <laughs> and you know, like 12 companies will go, we'll sell it for you, we'll sell it for you. So you know, times have changed in only you know eight years, which is amazing to me. I think it's so cool that it's like the world's completely flipped upside down. The power, like you used to be, as a musician who had a record, you used to be completely powerless and nobody would take your call. Now as a musician with a record, there are like dozens of businesses will be glad to sell it for you. Right. And I love that. So, yeah, so then it, it leads me to kind of think, like, well, what else do my friends need help with? So these days it's like, yeah, they need help with promotion. They need help with their website. They need help with advice. They need help, like, uh, you know, meeting other people that could hook them into different situations. And so, yeah, so I like kind of thinking of, well, whatever it is that musicians need. So my answer's changed. These days it's like what I'm really doing is a musician's service. Mm -hmm.